I was enough older than the boys and sooner preoccupied with love than they were. So I didn't take part in the blood sport they called touch football. <laughs> anyway, I was then and still am more geek than athlete, but they all seemed to enjoy it. Though I noticed only one of them went on to take football seriously. <laughs> long before Charles Cadell was making history with his fierce denunciation of the Vietnam War, introducing in the Senate the Vietnam Disengagement Act to end the funding for that tragic mistake. He used to invite me to walk with him and counsel the family's great game. And so on my frequent trips to Washington to stay with the Cadells, I would walk each evening along the edges of Rock Creek Park with Charlie and the gentle giant. And Charlie would recall the arguments he made that day before a congressional committee, or he would rehearse the points he was going to make in the next day's discussion. I had a sense that I was walking with history while Charles Goodell was on his way to make it. He was very smart and earnestly articulate. He earned Richard Nixon's characterization of him as the egghead of the Republican Party, a creative intellectual in the best sense of the word. That's what Nixon said about him before Charles urged the president to end the U.S. role in Vietnam. Sadly, Nixon would not listen to him or even respect the egghead when he came out against the war. So Nixon went after him and sicked Spiro Agnew on him and politics was becoming Goodell's new blood sport. In 1968, the Viet Cong invaded, routed the U.S. Embassy, forced the ambassador to leave, 400 Americans were killed. And that was the beginning of 1968. 1968 had the vibrations of earthquake. America shuddered. History cracked open. American culture and politics ventured into dangerous and experimental regions. The year was pivotal and messy. 1968 was tragedy and horrific entertainment. Deaths of heroes, uprisings, suppressions, the end of dreams, blood in the streets of Chicago and Paris and Saigon, and at last, at Christmas time, man for the first time floating around the moon. So we had the Tet Offensive in January. We had, uh, a couple months later, the New Hampshire primary, where everyone assumed that President Johnson would win in a landslide. And it was shocking to the political world that Senator Eugene McCarthy received 42% of the vote. That doesn't happen against a sitting president. Lyndon Johnson, three weeks later, withdrew, would not run for re-election. Sadly, a week later, April 1968, Martin Luther King was assassinated. And then two months later, Robert F. Kennedy was assassinated. So it goes on, I won't, I won't go through the whole litany, but Soviet Union invaded Prague, put down the Czechoslovakian Revolution. The uh, Democratic National Convention had riots, and students who were protesting war, the war peacefully were beat up and some were killed. Um, Jackie Kennedy, left the country. She married Aristotle Onassis and uh, moved to Greece. And Richard Nixon was elected president of the United States. So it was a bad year, 1968. <laughs> so I want to quote once again Newsweek magazine and make the connection with Charles E. Goodell. So here it is. The sudden sense of vacancy of eternity in Robert Kennedy's eyes as he lay on the floor of the Los Angeles Hotel Pantry. That vacancy, almost exactly halfway through the year, seemed to break the years back. Nothing good, one thought, could happen after that. But you know what? Something good happened. I have the New York Times article from September 9, 1968. Governor Rockefeller, and this is a direct Quote, New York Governor Nelson A. Rockefeller said, I'm choosing Charles E. Goodell 
to give continuity to Senator Kennedy's efforts in so many areas. Governor Rockefeller called attention to Goodell's role in the liberalization of the Republican platform to benefit the poor, the Negro, and the youth. I apologize for saying the Negro, but that was in quote. Um, so there it is, Nelson Rockefeller citing Charles E. Goodell to carry on the torch that Robert F. Kennedy carried so brilliantly. So here we are celebrating a 50-year <coughs> reunion, a 50-year jubilee of that great day. Thank you.